And when you talk from the standpoint of religion, they say you are a religious by God. We are not just saying vote this person because he's a Christian. No. If he doesn't have the credentials, I will not speak for him. So where we are now, there are two things that are important. The first is to have a PVC so that you can exercise your franchise. If you don't have a PVC now to vote, you are wrong. And then the second is to invest prayer. Because a man will be good until he ascends the throne. Thrones are powers. And as I talk about the next point, you will see it. You will keep praying. This is when they enter covenants. Covenants that mar and, and maligns the potential of good governance. Because now they are under pressure. Anything you bring, they agree. Because the only thing they are seeing is to have them announced on that day. This is where they enter into dark covenants and deep demonic commitments. This is where compromises take place. Somebody walks up to you and say, I will support you, I will give this kind of money, but I will do what I want, you will give me immunity. These are the times. And so we must invest prayer for the man of God that he will keep being transformed and transfigured so that when men come to him, the glory of God upon his life will overshadow them and they will drop their demonic ambition and submit to the government of that glory. Because a man can, will either help you through negotiation or he will help you because favor and glory will compare him. If a man is helping you through negotiation, is interest for interest. But when he's helping you by glory and favor, it becomes God's agenda. And so the reason we must invest prayer now is so that God's candidate as transfiguration is taking place. When men see him, they will see the glory. You know that when, when Stephen was transfigured, the Bible said those who looked upon him looked thought he was an angel. Many people will go to that ballot confused. But as we are sending prayers, sending prayers, and transfiguration is taking place, they will, they are, their perspective about him will change. I was telling somebody, I said, they have three major people in Nigeria today contending for the position. And if you like, you can say four. And the ratio of Christian to the sons of the born woman is one is to three. We don't need campaign. If we are kingdom people, we shouldn't have campaign. There are six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Four of them are dominated by Christians. Forget the manipulation through censors. You talk, they say Kanu is populated. Is Kanu more populated than Lagos? Is manipulated. See, when they censor, they, they do all kinds of things. Just to have demographic to oppress people during election. And the reason it looked as if the north is heavy when it comes to election is because those from the southeast and the south south decided to pull out of politics because they were marginalized so when election comes you see that the results from enugu anambra imo is 400 000, they don't go out to vote but the case is not the same now because now everybody is coming out so you will know that all of the talk that kanu katsina kaduna is a charade they are not more populated than us. And when you start talking, they say, these are religious by gods. Whereas, what harmonizes the north is religion. It's not politics. It's not money. The reason they can pull out at the 11th hour and quickly agree is because they say it's for Allah. It's for Islam. It's for Jihad. Did you not see the fake Sharia law that was propounded and propagated seven, eight years ago? Now, because they came into power, everything about Sharia law, nobody is hearing it again. But when a Christian was in power, they were forcing it in Sharia. It's all to, to distort government. Just to have an advantage. And when you talk from the standpoint of religion, they say you are religious by God. We are not just saying vote this person because he's a Christian. No. If he doesn't have the credentials, I will not speak for him. But there's nobody on that ballot that is better qualified than him. There's no one. There's no one. And the one that they are insisting on that is, is, is also good or better. Can you handle the problem of Nigeria when you are sleeping in a meeting? A 30 minutes meeting, you have dozed off. Is that the person that can handle Nigeria? Let's not challenge his antecedent. Assume everything they say is true. 
but he has retired. He should go and sleep. His grandchildren should come and visit him. Let him have rest. Because that's where he, are, he is now in the cadre of life. Because we don't need somebody who will be sleeping in Asso Rock and a Kaba will be ruling Nigeria. So we are not saying this just because we are Christian. We are also saying this because of the necessity for national inclusiveness, for equity, for justice. You can't marginalize people consistently. A seven year to eight year administration is about to end when no Christian had to say. Even the vice president who was a Christian was shot and puppeted throughout the administration. All the relevant offices, 60 to 70% of the relevant offices are Islamic and you want to transfer to another Islamic person. Today Boko Haram comes to knock on people's door and, 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 and extract them. There is so much audacity around kidnapping, around violence. Because even if you arrest them, there is, there is sen sentimental attachment. Arrest the Fulani man on the road here, he will call the presidency. If you like, arrest him in Benue. He can call somebody from Asu Rock. And you want that level of audacity to continue being propagated? We are not religious by God, but we are also not naive. So you can't come to national television and talk about equity, justice, patriotism, whereas all your activity is nepotistic, is segregating. All your activity is, is aggressively against the other religion. And you want people to keep quiet because we, you want us through naivety to act civil. No, we are wiser than that. We know better. We know better. After all, the person running, the Christian running, is not running with the Christian as a running mate. He's running with a northerner from the north. A Muslim person from the north as a running mate. We are not the one who picked one religion completely for our ticket. So there's a balance of equity. Now hear this, because prayer engenders transfiguration, even if it's 30 minutes, releasing sense. Because transfiguration is glory subduing flesh. If you keep releasing prayer, the glory of God on the man will become so high that even his enemies will have no choice but to support him. Because we saw that operation in the life of Solomon, that Solomon had rest and reigned because of that operation of favor, of wisdom, and of glory. Pray for him. That your five minutes prayer may be what completes the circuit of intercessors around Nigeria. Because people may have prayed. That five minutes the Holy Ghost is telling you to pray would have been a gap in the intercessory chain. And so God used it to fuse it. So there's no prayer that is too small. Raise an incense. Every day, ask that this man I send glory. You see, a puffer has played and the church was perfected. Pray that it will be perfected. He has antecedents, he has credentials, and he represents the interest of the kingdom. And so we fortify him with prayer. We fortify him with favor. We fortify him with glory. We fortify him with power. We fortify him with influence. We fortify him with money. Paul say, if after the manner of flesh, I fought the beast of Ephesus, we contend against the powers of darkness and we decree that God's man wins. God's man reigns. Man to have been given to the church once, once again. again. Mandates have been given to the church once, once again. Seasons have been given to the church once, once again. again. Moments have been given to the church once, once again. again. For the priests to be born, for the princes to arise, for the kings to be run, for the thrones to be given. Ali, Ali, oh. Ali oh, Ali oh, Ali oh, Ali oh, Ali oh, Ali oh, Imagine if 10 million of us are praying and all of us are echoing one man. 10 million. Do you know the weight of that sacrifice? He said the prayers of the saints, Revelation 5, 8, are sent to heaven as orders. He said they are stored in golden vials. That's what the 20 and 4 elders fetches from in order to carry out throne room legislation. Imagine 
If 10 million pray, 20 million pray. We will not only vote, we will also pray. Because there is a fortification of glory, wisdom and favor that comes through prayer. He said, when Esther fasted and prayed, the king said, I will give you my kingdom. Esther 5, 2 and 3. Whatever you ask, I will give you, even if it is up to half of the kingdom. Why do you think a president that was nepotistic, a pre president that was a segregatist person, a president that was sensitive to one religion and one tribe, suddenly woke up and said, election must be free and fair. Because things are already happening in the spirit. He said, I saw what looked like the feast of a man. Elijah said, that is the sign of an abundance of rain. He will not only insist for free and fair election, he will ensure that the writing is done. And the writing will be done when the, God, the man of God ascends that throne. It's our time, it's our season. It's not, it's not one, one politician who is coming to take Nigeria as his retirement benefit. My destiny is your retirement benefit. The agenda of God is your retirement benefit. If you give somebody money, go and collect it. Nigeria is not yours. God has an agenda here. Mandates have been given. To, to the church once, once again, again. mantles have been given hey. to the church once, once again. again thrones have been given to the church once again hey. for the kings to be born hey. for the presidents to arise yeah. for the kingdoms to be delivered hey. for the nations to be born ali ali o ali o ali o ali ali o ali ali o Aliyo, Aliyo, ah! The name of the Lord will not be mocked. No, the name of the Lord will not be mocked. You look at a population of Christians dominating for your political zones, and you are running on a ticket. You pick after a Muslim ruled for eight years. You pick another Muslim as if that is not enough. You now carry a Muslim as a running mate. Wow! What an audacity. After rubbishing all the politicians in APC, all the Christian politicians put together, rubbish them, and told them they were naughty. Major positions in the country, all of them given to them. Even when they came to run primaries, over 30 people applied for the national chairmanship position. They allowed them, they bought form. They didn't stop them. They bought form that went for 100 million. And then at the end of the day, they came and said they appointed a pick somebody who is still a Muslim. And then that national cabinet, I was told only the assistant secretary is a Christian. And then they conduct the election. A Muslim wins. And you pick a Muslim for running mate. What then will be the next dispensation? And then you want us to be naive, to come and say, well, uh, uh, we are so civilized, it's not about what you, the, the, the religion you, you are into. How many mosques were, were, were burnt in the last dispensation? Somebody say, God forbid. The Lord approved not. The Lord and prove it not. We will pray and we will vote. And there will be a change. And the man of God will win. Sorcerers have spoken. Curses and spells have been released. And these curses and spells target most people who are in authority. The Bible said Satan moved David to number Israel, which was against God's law. So when you find people who you think should be first class citizens, talking like illiterates, uninformed, either because of bitterness, insecurity, or wickedness of heart, you will know that this thing is more spiritual than it's natural. How can a man who is a first class student, reason, not, not able to reason what a boy of 10 years is able to reason? You think it's normal? And if prayers are not made, you will be shocked 
the level of manipulation that we have happened at the 11th hour, especially from the eastern quarters. One person just comes and stand and start trying to create what does not exist. And then you'll find crowd following. We said it, we said it. They think they are being reasonable. One man can manipulate the whole city. One man. I ask the question, I say, if truly we are Christian, Christians, why do we need campaign when one Christian is standing against three Muslims? Assume the lie that they told, that they are more populated is true. If assume it, but they are already divided. Three from one, one, one side. How, how are they supposed to be a match if sorcery has not manipulated people? And you come, you say, it's not about prayer. Got the PVC. Which PVC? The PVC is useless until the mind is sane, until the mind is corrected. This is why litigation and legislation is important. And this is one of the major purpose of prayer. If you study Isaiah 59, the only place, verse 19, where the word intercessor was used in the Bible, you will find out that a nation will fall into anarchy and chaos if there's no intercessor. It will be lost. People will not be able to move on the highway because of evil. All kinds of moral breakdown law, break, is a legal thing, highly judicial in the spirit. This is not a religious engagement. That's why you have to be careful to pray. Pray in your understanding and use the right words. And I'm going to be teaching you about the types of prayer and the laws of prayer. So you will know how to pray it. There's a prayer of petition. There's a prayer of intercession. There's a prayer of agreement. All of these prayers are necessary in situations like this. Intercession, petition, and agreement. And if you don't know how it works, we may not have results. That's why this series will be done in this video. Because we are at the 11th hour, and at the 11th hour, there is greater need for intensification. Prayer, legislation, and litigation. If it doesn't happen, a city can be overrun. Let me show you another scripture. Acts 13 verse 7. Paul went to a city to preach, and there was a sorcerer who blindfolded the governor and made him to reject what was of God. See, when people can't see what God is saying, and they are even offended. Don't, don't be angry with them. They are blind. Second Corinthians 4 to say, for our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. With all the marginalization that we have seen in the last eight years, a Christian still stands up and is telling you, don't be a religious by God, don't this, don't that. Maybe because they've not kidnapped his or her relative, or they've not bought a church where his mother attended. So he thinks it's, it's news, it's national news. There are people that the whole family were burnt, explode, butchered just because they went to pray. There are, there are states in this country today that you dare not start a business. Either you relocate or you live in fear. There are states in this country you can't even go to school. You say you are a Christian. If they see that you are fire, you don't need to do anything. They come and accuse you that you taught the Quran. Or they accuse you that you insulted Muhammad. And before you know, they stole you to death. Nothing happens. No bodies arrested or prosecuted. Since we started hearing about Boko Haram, you will, have, you will hardly hear that publicly anybody has been prosecuted. You are a barrister. Is there a record that Boko Haram people, have they not captured Boko Haram before? They've captured severally. How many have they prosecuted publicly? That is on record. You arrest somebody in Benway, they say bring him to Abuja. And the case, you don't hear anything again. And then you hear that a prison break happened. And so many of high profile terrorists who have been put in prison, those are the ones arrested who cannot be let go, have been in prison for more than six years. What are they doing there? Some of them, their cases have not even been decided. And then you wake up, you say, eh, nobody's against those on the side of Islam or those who are traditionalists, or those who are giving to sorcery. Nobody is against anybody. But we insist that there must be equity. We insist that there must be balance. Nigeria does not belong to one religion. Because if Christians rule today, and only Christians keep ruling, a time will come when 
Christians we may may because there are those who are zealous who are not who have not learned Christ may begin to oppress Muslims. We are not advocating for that either. And if Muslims rule and there is no balance for a Christian too to rule, then those who are also by gods of the Islamic order or who are passionate about their own understanding of Islam can take powers to their hands and begin to oppress Christians because of the religious sentiment that exists between leaders and followers of the same clan. And so we insist that there must be equity, there must be justice, we insist that nepotism must not have a place and we insist for natural justice. Is it only Muslims that are educated? In the last dispensation, you say you are looking for qualified people and more than 60% are Muslims. Wow. All of a sudden. And we have not seen too many Muslims on the list of inventors. How many of them are inventors? How many of them are on the list of inventors from time immemorial? All of a sudden. They are the most educated people and we don't have education educated people from different parts of nigeria again the other day dr paul was listing the portfolios major portfolios i almost wept and so because we cannot carry guns bows and arrows we will carry the walls of god in the place of prayer because when we pray we change things he said my people who are called by my name we humble themselves and pray. He said, I will hear them from heaven and I will heal their land. Sometimes for God to heal the land, the scepter will change hands. We will pray. That's where we fight. When we pray, kings can be dethroned. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, 20 and, 20 and 21, we saw Daniel as one man, prayed and two archangels were mobilized. And the kingdom power change hand before because one man pray. See, the Bible said in Romans 15, verse 4, it said the things that were written at time, they were written for our learning, so that we through through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. If one man prayed and a kingdom power change hands in the kingdom, what will happen if 10 million people pray? These are the questions I keep asking. Daniel, one man, and he prayed for just 21 days, and he shook powers in Babylon. What will now happen if 10 million of us are praying? We don't know the potentials of prayer. We have reduced prayer to God. I'm hungry. God, give me house rent. That is good, but that's kindergarten. When you grow, you know all things are yours. You begin to pray for higher matters. And one of the higher matters of the kingdom is legislation and litigation. And so the Bible speaking in Mark 11:24. He said, the way you deal, to deal with a mountain is to pray and not to doubt. And he said, whatever mountain it is, be it a mountain of government, be it a mountain of media, he said, where you pray, believe that you have it and you shall have it. So prayer is the weapon that changes things. He said, when you pray, believe. So the way to legislate and litigate is to pray. And when you pray, believe that you have it. And he said, you shall have what you say. So in this season, we are going to pray. And we will pray and monitor the election from the altar until that which God spoke through his prophets and until that which is just finds expression. Prayer is for litigation. Prayer is for legislation. Hello. Thanks for watching. I believe you've been blessed.